Okay, guys, welcome to the very last day of class of this second partial and our very last review. So we have been seeing component inequalities, in multi-step inequalities, component inequalities, and absolute value inequalities and equations. Today, we're going to practice absolute value equations and inequalities. We're going to begin with the rules that you need to remember. Now, just remember, I'm giving you the option of having this in an index card. If you have an absolute value with an expression on the inside, a variable expression, remember variable expression is a term that has a variable that could be adding, subtracting, or multiplying something else, but it is inside the absolute value, equal to a positive number, it has to be equal to a positive number, then you have to have two different answers. You're gonna have the same exercise that you had, but without the absolute value. So the expression equal to the positive number and the expression equal to the neg number, but in negative, okay? Has to be one positive, one negative. That is option one. Option two is that you have the absolute value expression equals to a negative number. If and only if you have already the absolute value completely alone in one side, and that is equal to a negative number, then your answer is going to be no solution, okay? If the absolute value is equal to a negative number, then it's going to be no solution. Let's begin with an easy one about that. Let's say that we have the absolute value of x plus 1 equals to 5. So an expression equals to a positive number. So we're going to eliminate the absolute value expression. Let's use two different colors. And we're going to say x plus 1 equals to 5 just by eliminating the absolute value. And the second one is going to be x plus 1 equals to negative 5. We're going to solve that, OK? How we're going to solve it? Exactly how we solve equations, by leaving variables completely alone in one side with inverse operation. So this one goes to the other side. Okay. I get it right because it is positive. So we're going to have x is equal to 5 minus 1. Four, yeah, four, okay? And that's the first answer. Let's go with the second one. Again, the same thing. This one is added, so it goes to the other side. Subtract it. Now we're gonna have X is equal to negative five minus one. Negative five minus one. Negative five minus one. Negative, negative six. six. Negative six, okay? Remember the sign, negative six. And those are your two answers, okay? You're gonna have two answers. Those are, that's it, we're finished. That's it, that's the exercise. Easy peasy, breezy, lemon squeezy. Okay, what if, what if I say absolute value of X plus one is equal to negative eight? What are you going to say in here? What are we going to do? Are we going to separate it? No, no solution. solution. Exactly. You don't do anything else but say no solution. You need to write that in your procedure of the exam if you get an example like this. Okay, You have to show it. So it is no solution. What if I have negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1 equals to negative six is it no solution is it no solution no why not because i don't have the absolute value expression completely alone i have a negative two on the outside in order for me to go ahead and say no solution i need to have the absolute value completely alone in one side equal to a negative number. In this case, I have a negative two first. Let's multiply that. I'm not gonna do the distributive property. I'm passing this 
to this other side with an inverse operation first because it is outside the absolute value. So this negative two, it is multiplying. So it goes dividing. So I'm going to have for this exercise, absolute value of X plus one equals two negative six divided by negative two. How much is negative six divided by negative two? Three. Positive three, right? Because negative times negative is positive. So can I say now that this is no solution? No, right? I cannot say that this is no solution. Now I can go ahead and separate it just like we did in here. Okay, I'm not gonna solve it. It was just for this part to, for you to understand. You can solve it in your notebook and you upload that in your notebook assignment that you need to upload that will be available today if Schoology lets me, okay? So that's what we have. We're gonna continue solving that inequality and placing X plus one equals to three and X plus one equals to negative three. That is the first part. That is easy peasy, absolute value equations, okay? Let's go now with another absolute value equation, okay? Still an equation. This one we will solve. This one is a little bit more complex, okay? Let's place it in black. And we're gonna have, let me separate this for you so you can remember that these are the rules. Okay, rule and rule. And those are your rules. Now I'm gonna do the exercise, the third exercise that we have. And this is the important one, the one that you have to pay really close attention. So 2b minus three inside the absolute value, but everything divided by four and everything plus one the fractions is equal to seven. So it is really complex because I have a division, a fraction, just like Aran said, and I have an addition equals to a positive number. Can I go ahead in that moment and say that that's a no solution? No, because it is a positive. So probably I could have an answer, probably. First, I need to leave the absolute value expression completely alone. So which should I move first to the opposite side? The four multiply. The four should go multiplying first? Yeah? No, Isabella? I think it's the one. The one. Why do you think it is the one? So that way we can have the number in concrete and then we can pass the four to the other side. Because we are going with inverse operations, therefore we're using an inverse pandas, okay? When we are trying to leave something completely alone, remember we for, we pass first to the opposite side, additions and subtractions, and then the multiplications and divisions. So yes, this one goes to the other side first with an inverse operation that in this case would be minus. So we got absolute value of two B minus three, everything over four. And let's do this mentally. Seven minus one, Six. Six, okay. So we could do that mentally. Now we need to pass this four to the other side. And what would be the inverse operation for that four? Multiplication. And multiplication because it is a denominator and we use fractions as division. So now we got an absolute value of two B minus three equals two, and let's make it also mentally, six times four. 24. 24. Now you see it is a positive number. Therefore, I can go ahead and separate them into two equations. So I'm gonna have two B minus three equals to 24, exactly as it is, just without the absolute value and 2b minus 3 equals to 
negative 24. Now I'm ready to solve this equation. This is negative, so it goes to the other side. Positive. 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 So I have left 2B is equal to 24 minus 3. How much is 24 minus 3? 21. 21. Now I need to leave the variable completely alone. So this 2 goes to the other side. Dividing. Dividing. So I'm going to have now that B is equal to 21 over 2. And that's Miss, my first answer. You put the sign like it's it was negative, but it passes positive. And you, you subtract 23 very minus. Good. Very, very good for paying attention to that. So it is 27. 27 over 2. It is my final answer still because I cannot simplify that. Okay, so very good for paying attention to that. Very, very good. Now let's go with the next exercise, the next part of this same exercise, which is the one in green. Again, this three goes to the other side, adding. I'm going to be careful enough to place it adding. So we got 2B equals to negative 24 plus 3. Negative 24 plus 3? Mm, negative 21. Negative 21, correct. Now the 2 is multiplying, so it goes to the other side, dividing. So I have now that B is equal to negative 21 divided by 2. Can I simplify this? No, right? So I'm going to leave it like that. Equation, you do not graph. Okay, equations, you do not graph. And that is the first part of equations. If it's negative, you say it's no solution, if and only if you have the absolute value completely alone in one side. If you have equal to a negative number, but it is not completely alone, first you pass whatever so value on the other side outside the absolute value with whichever um, inverse operation you need. And then you can decide if it's a no solution or if you have to uh, solve, just like in this case, okay? Remember that this one, you have to finish it. You have to finish this exercise. Okay, and that's the part for equations. Let's go now for the part of inequalities. Let's draw it in a red line. And now we're gonna go with inequalities. Just like equations, we have specific rules, okay? We say that if we have a variable expression that it is greater than or greater than or equal, that's why I'm placing it in another color, to a positive number, I'm only going to place exercises that will be in an inequality greater than or less than to a positive number. I'm not placing negative numbers. I'm only placing positive numbers right now. This is an or compound inequality. This needs to be converted into an or compound inequality. How is that going to be? You're going to say, okay, the exercise just as it is, either greater than or greater than or equal to the positive B. That's the first one. Or the expression without the absolute value, but now you reverse the inequality sign. Now it's going to be less than or less than or equal, and you're going to place the number negative. So to negative B. Okay. So A is greater than or greater than or equal to B, depending on your inequality, or A is less than or less than or equal to negative B. That's how you're going to do it. Now, the other one is the end. And the inequalities will be when you have the absolute value completely alone in one side, less than or less than or equal, okay? To a positive number. This is gonna give you an end inequality. Okay, remember we saw that in our previous review. How is it gonna be then? You're gonna copy the expression just as it is, so A, is less than or less than or equal 
So positive B, just as it is, okay? But you're gonna add as well on the other side, the same inequality sign, the same number, but the number in negative, okay? That is one option. The other option is to have it the other way around. The positive number first, greater than the expression, greater than the number in negative. Both of them are basically the same thing. How's that? Okay, you can see that this inequality sign, one of the inequality signs, the little corner, the little tip is pointing the negative number. And the other inequality, the little tip of the inequality is pointing the middle part. Let's check this one. Again, one of the inequalities is pointing the middle part and the other inequality is pointing the negative number. So it's basically the same thing. It's like looking at it in front of a mirror and it goes the other way around, goes backward. But it is exactly the same thing. So if you have this or you have this, then you need to know that they are uh, an end, okay? Now let's do some exercises for this. We're gonna do it again with fractions, something that does not have the, the, the inequality just like that, okay? Not as easy. So let's see, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do absolute value of y. Let me place this line so we can separate the rules. Okay. So you can have the rules separated. There, those are your rules. So we're gonna have absolute value of y minus two, everything over three is less than five. What should I do first? What should I do first? Pass the three to the other side, multiplying. Pass the three to the other side, multiplying. Very good. So let me separate this so we can have a space over here to graph whatever we need to graph. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do first. Pass the three to the other side, multiply it because I have a fraction and I cannot work with fractions. Okay, so now I'm gonna have absolute value of y minus two is less than five times three, 15. 15, okay, we can do that part mentally. Or you can place it and say five plus times three in an extra step. Okay, into what type of inequalities should I separate this or convert it? To what type of compound inequality should I convert this? And an end, correct. So I'm going to copy my expression, just as it is, but without the absolute value. And I'm going to add at the beginning exactly the same sign, the same number, but the number in negative. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to separate it now into two different inequalities, okay? So remember how we separate the end, that would be one, and this will be the other, okay? Remember the middle part will always be repeated. So I'm going to say negative 15 is less than y minus two, and let's write it over here, y minus two is less than 15. And we're gonna solve it, okay? Just like we know that to solve inequalities. How's that? Using the three specific rules, variables on the left, constants on the right, and if there's a negative number that needs to go to the other side, either multiplying or dividing, then you reverse the inequality sign. Okay, so this one should go to this side, the negative two, because variables are already alone in the left side, and I need to pass a constant. So this negative two goes, positive, right? That's the inverse operation. 
So we're going to do y is less than 15 plus 2. How much is 15 plus 2? 19. How much is 15 plus 2? 17. 17. 17. Correct. And that's it. That's the first one. Let's do the other one. Now, in this one, we need to pass the variable to the left because it's at the right side. So it goes. Negative. negative. And this negative 15 goes to the right. And how does it go? Positive. Positive. So we have left now negative y is less than negative 2 plus 15. Negative y is less than how much is negative 2 plus 15? 15. 13. 13 positive. Now, I don't need negative y, I need positive y. So what should I do? Flip the sign. I flip the inequality sign and I change the signs of each side. This was negative, now it's positive. This was positive, now it is negative. And that's it, right? No, we that's have it. to graph. Oh, we have, we to, have graph. to graph, yes. If you don't graph, then you lose part of your exercises and you don't want that and I don't want that either okay so I draw with the ruler my number line I pick two options two locations where I want my numbers which number goes over here at the left negative, negative, 13. negative 13 negative 13 because remember smaller numbers go in the left side and over here the 17 are they open or are they closed open Open. 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 So I'm going to graph an open circle with two different colors, okay, in my number lines. See, the circles are on the number line, not on top. And now I'm going to shade. To which side should I shade? Should I shade in opposite sides or towards each other? Towards each other. Towards each other. Okay, so I'm going to shade at the bottom the pink one from circle to circle okay you see from circle to circle and at the top the purple one also from circle to circle and that is the exercise with a fraction what do you think about that pinchy pinchy right okay let's do the other one let's do another one that's a little different it still has a fraction but it is different okay we have in black, absolute value of x plus 4 over 3, everything over 3, but everything is inside the absolute value greater than or equal to positive 5. You see, it's different. This one has a denominator without an absolute value. This one has a denominator with an absolute value. What should I do then? We eliminate the absolute value. We see the negative. Positive five. So we do eliminate the absolute value by separating into what type of component inequality? Is it an end or is it an or? Or, 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 correct. So I'm going to say x plus 4 over 3 is greater than or equal to 5, just as it is, exactly as we showed, okay, as we did it first. Okay, and the other one is going to be x plus 4 over 3 less than or equal to negative 5, okay? And let's play the word or over here. So we remember that this is an or. So you have two options, okay? One is greater than or equal just as it is. And the other one is less than or equal to the number, but in negative, okay? And now we're going to solve it. So what's the next step to do over here in order to solve it? Pass the three multiplying. Exactly, plus the three multiplying. And I know that I have to do that same step in both because both have a fraction. So I'm going to just write it there in advance. 
We're going to solve it afterwards, okay? So x plus 4 is greater than or equal 5 times 3. 15. And now variables on the left, check. Constants on the right, no. This one should go to this side. How? Negative. Subtracting, very good, negative. So we have x is greater than or equal to 15 minus 4. How much is 15 minus 4? 11. 7. And I finished with the first one. Let's go with the second one. So we said that we had to multiply. So we have x plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 5 times 3. Negative 15. Negative 15. Now I need to check my steps. Variable on the left, check. Constants on the right. So this 4 has to go over here. Negative as well, just like the previous exercise. So we got that x is less than or equal to negative 15 minus, let's rewrite that, negative 15 minus 4. How much is negative 15 minus 4? Negative 19. Negative 19. Negative 19. And I finished, right? No, we have to graph. We graph. We use a ruler. We draw our arrowheads. We pick two locations where you have to have the numbers. Which number goes over here at the left? Negative 19. Negative 19. Negative 19. And the other one is 11. Open or closed? Close, close, close. Close, right? So I'm going to graph with the closed painted circle on top of my line. And should I shade in between or in opposite sides? Opposite sides. Opposite, opposite sides. Side. So I go ahead from the number all the way to the end of the number line, shade it with the two different colors. And there you go. That is how we graph it and how we solve when we have the fraction inside the absolute value. Do you guys have any questions? No question. Okay, then. This is the last review for this second partial.